uh, Ken Corla and Gurmeel Magat. And I, I welcome, I welcome this. I support this. And um, the motion was approved back in July, and we're going to set up what we promised we would in relation to June. Although it begs the question: Is it just June, and what about all the other places as has been referred to already? But as I'm wont to do, let me just put it in context. You know, the expert technical group that reported options and appropriate courses of action was published back in December 17. The government announced a forensic excavation in October 18. Minister Sapone made some comments about taking the right actions. In November 21, when nothing had happened, Dr. Neve McCullough, a forensic uh, archaeologist, amongst others, called for a full excavation of the site to happen as soon as possible so that DNA can be identified. And she went on to say, as a forensic archaeologist, I have never walked away from human remains in that context. The measures that were put in place to protect the site in 2017 were temporary measures that were not designed to last longer than six months. Yet, the site remains there, unattended and not properly sealed off. And as has been mentioned already by Deputy Holly Cairns, the work on the ground has pushed this government and every government reluctantly. And from day one, I acknowledge your bona fides, Minister, although it's wearing thin and in relation to what you've done in going back on your promise. But it's Catherine Corliss on the ground, uh, Mary Raftery well before that, and Patricia Burke Brogan, who died last week, and I want to just say, may, may she rest in peace in relation to the Magdalene Laundries and the work that she did, uh, in particular, the play Eclipsed. I could mention many, many more, and certainly the groups on the ground have forced us and dragged us every step of the way. I remember being at a meeting in June where the ministers there were talking about closure. Such an insult when we wanted openness and accountability. That's the level of misunderstanding, either benign or otherwise, I don't know. Why have I lost faith? Because we've no redress scheme and no sight of it. But what we do know, it's going to exclude anyone that spent less than six months. Now, I understand you're in receipt of correspondence from over 30 clinicians working in the area of childhood trauma. And they wrote on the 21st of November in response to the publication of the redress scheme. There is no quantum of time that allows us to think about the impact of childhood trauma. Thus, having an arbitrary period of six months exposure is simply that, arbitrary. Just close to that word now, arbitrary. What is known from research is that in the area of childhood trauma, it is a combination of adversity and quality of relationships, not time. And then the redress purport, uh, proposed excludes those who are um, boarded out. Our own special rapporteur for children said, Professor Conor O'Mahony, any child who experienced severe neglect, emotional abuse or physical abuse in aborted outplacements in circumstances where the state's inspection regime was clearly defective would have an entitlement to an apology and to redress in the same way as any other child who experienced neglect or ill treatment in an institution. My time is short. None of this makes sense to me. You have learned, not, not you personally, the, you, the system has learned nothing, absolutely nothing. We continue to begrudge and do everything belatedly. If we were seriously interested in making redress, let's do it right. You planned to review, have an independent human rights review of the testimony given by the 500 people. 50 plus people who came forward and you've gone back on that. I don't think you should have ever promised that because I don't think you were ever in a position to do that because you were never going to question the establishment narrative that was given to us by the three wise commissioners. That narrative that told us that the evidence of those that came forward was contaminated and should be therefore treated with caution. They were never going to go back on what they said. But what you promised was to go outside of that and do an independent, have it independently reviewed and you've gone back on that. And to add insult to injury, you said you will allow the people to come forward again if they wish, tell the story again and have it archived or displayed if that's what they want or use what was given, ignoring the fact of the pain and suffering for those 550 plus people who came forward with great courage 
to tell their story that was described as contaminated by the three wise commissioners. No such caveat was put down for those who came forward from the religious organisations or indeed doctors that came forward or solicitors. No such caveat was put there. So you should never have promised that, but having promised it, you should have seen it through or at the very least give proper analysis of why you changed your mind and tell the people personally on the ground who heard it through uh, 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 an announcement in the paper and of course we've had all the legal challenges that were upheld or settled in relation to that commission's report so in all of this all of this the most important thing from day one was trust trust and that trust is not there